Please proceed. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Scott Ellis. I'm a product application specialist here at Onset. Today we're going to take a closer look at the hardware and software for the Hobo U30 remote monitoring system. Please feel free to send in questions as the presentation goes along. If I can address them on the fly, I will. Otherwise, we'll take those at the end. The U30 is our next generation logging system for environmental and energy monitoring. Ultimately, when you're looking at the U30 system, it boils down to how do you want to get your data. We offer a traditional standalone data logger called the NRC, which is no remote communications. The NRC allows you to download directly in the field using a USB connection to your laptop or to what we call the Hobo U shuttle. For real-time access, we offer three ways to get your data to the Internet. That's by Wi-Fi, Ethernet, or cellular via the AT&T or T-Mobile networks. The U30 systems measure and record a broad range of parameters. Here's a list of parameters by, envi by environment. As you can see, we have many of the uh, weather measurements, including temperature and humidity and rainfall, as well as the energy measurements for kilowatt hours, amperage, and voltage. The U30 is our most rugged logger to date. Its double weatherproof enclosure provides extra protection for the electronics on the inside. The latches, the latches on the side allow you to easily access inside the U30. You can also secure the U30 by attaching small padlocks through the holes on the latch. Let me just highlight where these are here for you. Right here. Uh, the mounting brackets allow you to mount the U30 easily. Typically, if folks attach it to a tripod or a wood post for outdoor applications or simply just to a wall in the indoor applications. We've also added a weatherproof gasket for all of your sensors. The top photo is from a U30 weather station that we have on our roof here at Onset, which shows that each sensor is run through the gasket separately. The bottom photo is what you'll receive when you get the U30. Be sure to keep the plugs. You'll want to use these if you don't have enough sensors to fill in all the spots on the gasket. Again, taking a look at the U30 weather station that we have on our roof, you'll see the second weatherproof enclosure, uh, which holds the important uh, data logging and communication electronics. That's here in our clear box right here. The housing sits on top of rechargeable lead-acid battery. The battery is recharged either by a solar panel or an AC power adapter. I've also, I've also attached 10 of our plug-and-play smart sensors. The sensor ends look very similar to a phone jack, which is shown right here. I'll address what a smart sensor is in the next section under the Hoboware Pro demo. I also want to include this slide from our manual. Basically, this shows you all the hardware features of the U30 and goes into it into more detail. We can come back to this slide if anybody has any questions as time goes along here. Now we're going to take a look at the compatible software options for the U30 systems. In general, Onset has two primary packages. Hobolink, which is the web-based readout for your data, and Hoboware Pro, which is a host-based package for graphing and analysis. Depending upon which model you own, you will either configure the U30 with Hoboware Pro or Hobolink. We're going to take a quick look at how to set up a U30 NRC, which is no remote communications, using the Hobo using Hoboware Pro. Bear with me here as I switch gears and go over to my desktop. This is the first time that I've done this. And what we're going to do here is take a look. This is Hoboware Pro. I'm going to go ahead and plug in our U30. And then we go up, select device, and launch. This is going to connect to the U30. There's a little bit of information here that you'll see. You'll know your serial number, what your battery level is. There is a description field here. 
which we can go ahead and type in. Uh, this, this field will end up uh, being a part of your graph when you're all said and done, as well as a part of your file name when you go to read out. Down below, we get into the sensors that we have connected here. Currently, I have a temperature and humidity sensor, as well as a barometric pressure. Uh, as stated before, our, the sensors are smart. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, plug in an additional temperature and humidity sensor. And then just go ahead and hit refresh. The additional electronics that we've put into the sensors allow them to be pre-configured. And as you'll see, a second temperature and humidity sensor just showed up. One thing that you will want to do when you're using multiple sensors of the same type is hit the plus sign and then go in and set a location. Uh, this is important to be able to differentiate between uh, which is which. And then we go in and just hit outside and inside. As you can see, this will then show up on your graph as well as uh, in the table when you go to read this out. A couple other things here before we actually start the logger is you'll want to set your logging interval. Right now it's set for a second. What we're going to do is just increase this here. As you can see, the logging duration changes as I set my sampling rate, so you'll be able to easily tell how long the logger will actually run for. We do have a sampling interval, so this will do averaging over your, uh, over your logging interval. And finally, we have a couple different ways to launch the logger. We can either start it immediately at the next 10 minute interval or typing in an exact date and time of when you want it to begin. Just to make sure that we have everything up and running here, we're going to go down and click on the status button. This will open up a second screen and basically we will be able to get the current readings here. And uh, as we can see, temperature and humidity are changing down here because uh, I do have this in my hand. So let's go down and hit OK. And then we just come over here and hit Launch. This is going to send the information out to you at U30. And when the status bar completes, we are now up and running. So switching gears here over to uh, what we call Hobolink.com. Uh, this is where you come in and set up your Wi-Fi, Ethernet, and cellular. Uh, we already have a username, so I'm just going to go ahead here and log into our account. We have a bunch of U30s here already registered. Uh, we're actually doing an Energy Star rating study here at Onset, so we're looking at a bunch of the energy usage. Um, but for this particular demo, we're going to take a look at the weather station up on the roof. Uh, if you do have to register a device, you click on register. The serial number and device key are located on the inside case of your U30. But let's uh, take a look back here at our weather station. This, uh, this weather station here, it's been up and running for a while. Uh, we do have some information that is, that is currently be, being recorded. This is basically what the user interface is going to look like. To configure it, initially we come down to device configuration. This allows you to put in a nickname so you can differentiate between the, the different types of U30s that you have. It does allow you to set your time zone, as well as if you want to uh, create a little image, you can add an image here. Next, we have the launch configuration. 